This is a new friend of mine. Hey, it's Kara. Welcome to my take at the lake and the first installment of the 12 days of composition books. Again, it's not 12 consecutive days and my guess is going to be it's way more than 12, <laughs> but we're going to start there. This is one that I started in June. It is a nature journal, essentially. We are told over and over and over again in order to be more calm as a, as a way of meditation and to just decompress to get out into nature. And I don't know about you, but I think usually we conjure up taking a drive to the woods and spending an afternoon surrounded by trees in silence next to a river where we can drink from a natural spring. And that that's a lot of work and time and who has that kind of time. And so we never do it. We all have backyards or access to nature closer by. We don't have to make it a day trip that involves perhaps camping and gear. We can just step outside. We may have to filter out some of the distractions, perhaps look up instead of out and around, instead of facing the highway, turn and face the park behind the building or something. You know, we may have to do some of those things. But what I started to do was start feeding birds in my own backyard. And it's been just a delight and so much fun and I think it has really helped raise my calm level which is an ongoing thing around here and I wanted to keep track of it I wanted to write about what was going on what I things that I saw things that I observed things that I learned things that I thought were funny and I started with this little guy because I thought oh I'll just jot a few things what I you know just make a couple notes here and there well Within by the second day, I knew this was not gonna work. <laughs> it was way too small, way, way too small. So I switched to a comp book. And at the end of the video, I'll give you some offshoots of this. If this doesn't rattle your cage, perhaps I have some alternative ideas. And I'm sad to say that my subscribers and viewers in Australia and the UK and Canada have all said, sadly, they cannot get composition books where they are. They're in short supply or no supply, which is craziness because they are ubiquitous here in the States. You can't go anywhere without finding them. That just seems so off to me. But it doesn't have to be a composition book. It can be any notebook that is sewn. That's the important thing, that they're stitched down the center. This one happens to have the rounded corners, but if, you, if your notebook doesn't, you can round them off. And most of the time, I cover the covers anyway, so the blotchy, black and white composition book look goes away anyway. So it doesn't have to be just this kind of book and this kind of book alone. This series of 12 and then some videos are all different ways to make use of inexpensive notebooks that you don't have to make that you don't have to necessarily alter like an altered book can be a lot of work these you can just jump in and that's one of the things i love about them this this one is a moleskine i got on clearance at amazon it's just a moleskine i think i got two for i don't know maybe 13 dollars or something so it's moleskine, of course, it's going to be more expensive versus 50 cents or a quarter around back to school time, you know, but it's better than not having one. They don't have to be expensive either. I just wanted, this happens to be handy, one that I've been using recently, so it just happened to be close to hand to show you. But there are alternatives, there are other ways to to play along. So this one is kind of a, like I said, a nature journal in the in the vein of Edith Holden, certainly nowhere near as beautiful as her work, but you can see I keep a pencil in it and I keep this right next to my back door and outside my back door is stairs to my basement and outside just at the bottom of the stairs is the door to go back to the backyard where the bird feeders are. And I always had bird feeders in my flower garden along my fences, but I can't see them from my back door. And so I decided to move the feeders where I can see them. And so when I'm working on the computer, I, sl I can slide my chair. I just turn around and go over to the, to the 
back door and just watch the birds for a little while frolic in the water in the bird bath or fight over the feed at the feed or whatever it's just been a delight and so now i can watch them and this these are images i believe from birds and blooms it started because i wanted to to feed the hummingbirds that's where it all started so i put out a couple hummingbird feeders and then i thought well i love chickadees let me get some seed and a little feeder for the chickadees and it's just blossomed from there i knew what i wanted to do with this so i took a few of my birds and blooms magazine that i had gotten here and there i think my uncle gave me some and i may have gotten some in the mail but you don't need birds and blooms to make that work either there's all kinds of nature pictures in all kinds of magazines you know just keep an eye out for them once you tell your brain what you want to filter you'll find what you're looking for so i took birds and blooms magazine images and i did a spread in the center of the book and the back cover inside back cover the cute plane in the water and front and side cover. These are the birds that come to my yard, except this one. I don't have any blue, any anything blue, except I did have one blue hummingbird, which is very rare. We have the ruby-throated. We have lots and lots of ruby-throated. These guys are very common here, but I saw a blue one in my yard, bright blue like this. I have a downy woodpecker. I have, I think these are golden finches. I'm not, you know, I'm kind of new at this. I do have a family of house finches. I do have jays. I had a couple hummingbirds. I have lilacs. And I have chipmunks. Anyway, what I am doing with this is, like I said, taking notes and writing down the things that I see. Today I put out my my new bird, bird bath. It's 15 or 20 years old, but I was afraid to put it in my yard for, as I mentioned, I had a stalker and I didn't want it, to, my stuff to get ruined because the person was coming into my yard and trashing everything I owned. And so I didn't ever put this beautiful gift out. And so it's a brand new, still in the box, bird bath. I don't know if I have any pictures of that. I'll have to take one and throw it in here. Brand new bird bath, put that out. Put out the feeders anyway that i just jotted down what i did that day i take a lot of pictures i love snapping pictures now with smartphones most of us are shutter bugs but i've always loved taking pictures and so i've got lots and lots of pictures of my feeders and the people that, the critters that come to my feeders and, and i thought and i i keep thinking oh i want one of those little mini printers where you can just print right from your phone and it makes a little sticker and you peel off the sticker and you stick it down number one i don't have one of those number two i don't think i'm going to get one anytime soon and number three they're pretty pricey not just you know, the thing itself is a, a, you know, a decent amount of investment. You know, it's not free, but the little sticker paper and the way I take pictures, I'd be, I'd have to sell a kidney to keep up with my sticker paper purchases. So what I am doing is I take all my pictures. I upload them to my Canva account, C-A-N-V as in Victor A, Canva. And I lay them out on an eight letter size document and I make them the size that I want. And then I cut them out and I paste them in and I get, you know, they're not quite as good quality because it's just on copy paper. And yeah, it's a little more time, time and labor intensive, but it's what I can do. It's what I have access to. Now you can, Canva has a free app and i highly recommend it if you're doing any of this kind of stuff go get yourself a free canva account not an affiliate they don't want they don't want me being an affiliate <laughs> uh not an affiliate but i'm a big believer in it it's a great program or it has been all these years you know now that they're multi-billionaires that may change as things tend to do but for now there is a free version and the free tools available for the free version are all you need to make these smaller images and um, kind of like the images we make for the hashtag using the same images collaboration or project for the season's glue book it's the same exact thing you can 
you can make them bigger or smaller you can overlap them you can make them individually i did this in kind of a collage so this is all one piece although it's one two three four different pictures it's one piece of paper just by layering them on the page let me know in the comments below if you would like me to do just a quick video showing you how to use the canva free app to take the place of one of these little mini printers. So I don't write in it every day, but I keep this right by the stairs and every time I feel like it, I grab hold of it and I sit at the top of the stairs. I'm inside where it's fairly cool and they're outside and they're just playing away and playing away. They don't even know I'm there and I get to watch. It's very fun. Or sometimes I take this out on my porch swing and watch them from there and take notes. Sometimes I just go out and I just be because that's the whole point, being in nature. I try to leave my phone in, although there's a the Merlin app. I'll talk about that a little bit more at the end of the video as well, and I'll put up some photographs so you can see what it looks like. Super, super cool app. I like to have my phone with me for that app so that I can identify who's singing. I'm getting to know their songs and who goes with what sound and, and whatnot. But super fun things, I saw this fat fat little baby robin out there one day and mama was trying to feed him and everything she put in his mouth he spit out <laughs> and she'd pick it back up and feed it back to him again and he'd spit out but i got some really cool pictures mama robin feeding big fat baby robin and after this event it started to rain and mom flew up a little ways away from him and just left him on his own and and he hopped he hopped and kind of flew and hopped and kind of flew to sit under a footstool that goes to one of my patio chairs to take shelter from the rain such a smart little bugger and then he he hopped again hopped half flew hopped half flew i don't think he could fly quite yet and he went under my hostas and and again because the footstool that he took shelter under is slatted so the rain was still getting through but he came over here and he took shelter under the hosta plants and he rolled up in his in his little ball and just waited out the rain so cute i'm learning so much about their personalities and and the things they do one day i saw one bird there was a whole bunch there must have been i counted 30 so somewhere between 30 and 50 birds all different kinds around the bottom of the feeder because the grackles go up get on the feeder they're too big for my feeders by design but they're too big for the feeders i got so they grab hold and they just flick the seeds out on the ground so that they can get them easier rather than having to stand on that tiny feeder and they just basically try to empty the feeder so there's all these birds around and i saw one bird i think it's a european starling because they're they're the bullies i always thought blue jays and grackles were bullies but european starlings are pardon me a-holes grab hold of the tail of another bird another kind of bird and just pull and that one was trying to get away and it wouldn't let go and this one was kind of running and it just kept pulling that poor bird's tail i've never heard of such a thing i've never seen such a thing but i've never watched either so this is fun for me so i write not every day some days i write more than others i take a lot of pictures i think this is the blue hummingbird that i saw I don't know if I wrote down the name of this, but the whatever one I did see looks it's almost like he's got sequins on him. They're so beautiful. These are from the internet. These are not pictures that I got. So now you've seen I've got pictures from magazines, pictures that I have taken, internet pictures to show what I wanted to show because I didn't have a picture of it. And it, it's all fine and dandy. And if you want to sketch, if you want to learn to sketch your flowers, Take a pencil out in your backyard in your nature journal and do some sketching. Don't hold yourself to Edith Holden watercolor sketching standards. Just sketch the things you see. Do some urban sketching, some loose, fast, free, inaccurate drawing in your own garden or in your own backyard or in the park near your house or wherever you can sit and just be with this kind of stuff. It makes a difference. It helps you sleep better. It helps you breathe better. When I'm out, the first thing I do whenever I go out to sit out there, whether it's to, to write or to watch or whatever, I take five what I call balloon breaths, deep in, 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 as far as you can, and let your belly expand, bring it into your lungs, down to your diaphragm, into your belly, in your gut, and blow your belly up. Just take 
full in air and hold it for five seconds or as long as is comfortable. And then exhale like you're blowing up a balloon through pursed lips. Exhale all that air you just took in and hold it. They're, they're called square breaths. Because in for five, hold for five, out for five, hold for five, square. But I find that the numbers don't line up. I can exhale longer than I can inhale sometimes or vice versa. And so I just do it as long as it's comfortable. Exhale as long as it's comfortable. Count to five or as long as it's comfortable and do it. And I do that five times. It takes less than a minute usually each time I go out there. And over time that has a cumulative effect doing those breaths by the way tells all the systems in your body all is well we're safe you can stand down you can relax and oh the health benefits of that because we're always on fight or flight we're always at crisis level we're rushed we're stressed we're we're depressed we're sad we're mad we're all these things weighs on us and so anytime you can do this kind of thing, we'll try to counteract that. We'll start to counteract that. And there's a cumulative effect. It will improve your sleep. It'll improve your nerves. It'll improve if you have anxiety and depression problems. It will improve that little by little by little. It'll improve, improve digestion. I mean, there isn't a system in your body, mental or physical, that those kind of five deep breaths on a regular basis. Sometimes I don't do it every day. Sometimes I do it four or five times a day. But I try to always do it because I don't always get outside. As I try to do one a day, but it doesn't always happen. And it's okay. Little Miss Bitsy is always out there with me. She is my little yard bird watching buddy. This is this was my first customer. His, I named him Cheeky Mick Not Shy. Because the first moment I was out there filling up this peanut butter feeder. He put peanut butter in these drilled holes. I mixed seed in with it, seed and lard and oats, and I made this goo, like homemade suet sort of, and I filled all these holes. Well, there's a lot of peanut butter in it, and I had a bowl of that seed peanut butter with me, and I went out to, to fill this. And this little guy, where'd he go? This little chipmunk came right up. Within, within a minute of me being there, he came right up and he just looked from the grass. He just watched what I was doing and he looked at me and he looked at the bowl and watched what I was doing. And I said, yeah, I see you. I see you there. And he came out and he sat right right next to me while I did this. And so I named him Cheeky McNot Shy. And he's always around and, and he has friends and I'll probably regret that. But so do you feed the birds? I mean, when you feed the birds, you feed everybody. Because the grackles come, the chipmunks come. I have pine squirrels, I have regular squirrels, I have skunks. You know, are the chickadees worth it? <laughs> I keep asking myself that question. I don't know. We'll see. But I do quite enjoy going out there. Me and Miss Bitsy, we just, we just chill. Here's my family of finches. There's a male and the female and the male. They had a couple babies. It was either a mama and two babies or a mom a dad and a baby i'm not sure which the morning doves are always around and so i'm learning a lot i learn a lot through that merlin app again i'll tack information about that at the end of the video i am learning a lot about the birds when i hear or see something different i i either google it or i write it down and look it up later who they are and what are their habits um, following my curiosity which is always good i love morning doves and they just make themselves right at home they are so chill and so laid back chilling on the back of one of my chairs <laughs> they're so funny and they're getting used to bitsy and she's getting used to them so she doesn't run after them and they don't tend to run away like they used to so it's just been really really good one of the things i pointed out in an earlier in the original video was to watch you'll see Maybe you'll notice or not. I don't know. There's all these wavy lines. This is where, this is a book, composition book that I got a while back. And the pages, many of them have these stupid wrinkles. 
and them and I don't know if you'll be able to see them on camera or not but I'm telling you they're so irritating when I'm trying to write and you can't really see it now because I well maybe if I close it you can kind of see how square this is where the good ones are rounded see how the moleskine is rounded versus flat that's one problem with the crappy ones in addition to the wrinkled pages and again if you're gluing over them or making them into art journals that really doesn't matter at all but it if you're writing in it it really does the, they're not as round the lines are different i mean they are so different so very different so this one was proudly made in the usa and factory certified by who a blind chimpanzee for god's sake this one was made in colombia this one has really thin paper you can hear how thin this paper is I don't see any wrinkles right off the bat, but it's like, it's almost like onion skin paper. It is so thin. That's crazy. Crazy thin. And very square. S just square, flat. Apparently they're made all over the place. There's some from Brazil, Colombia, United States, and Vietnam. The Vietnam ones have nice rounded spines, nice rounded corners. Yes, we do. We've turned into composition book snobs. <laughs> Go figure. So some of the offshoots to this, maybe you're into birds and you want to do something like this. Maybe you're into just flowers. Maybe you're into a certain kind of bird. Do whatever strikes you, but set up a book just for that and explore that curiosity. Explore that topic for yourself. If you don't have gardens, but really want to have gardens, Go where there are flowers, sketch them, learn what you can, plan for your future garden that you will have someday. Write down notes. What do you like? Where did you see it? Um, like a field guide, which we love to make in junk journal. Field notes, field guide. Those are some of the most fun projects that we make. Why not make a real one? You know, why not make, and you can take this as, you know, I could cut out, I, I did a little sketch not my best work I grant you but I wanted to be able to remember what I saw they're so smart the bigger birds because I by design got smaller feeders for finches and chickadees the bigger birds will grab hold of the pole the feeder pole with one claw and put an, their other claw on the feeder to hold it still and then like sidle up to the bar and and have their lunch it's so funny. I've seen birds hold both feet on the bar and lean over so that they could eat. And Cheeky, he just shimmies right up that pole like he's he's done pole dancing his whole life. Nothing slows him down. I've done everything I could to deter them. Vinegar, hot sauce, oil, all kinds of things. I even made hot seeds one time to deter the pine squirrels which i've not seen back but cheeky doesn't seem to mind he likes cayenne pepper in large doses apparently i also have a mom northern red cardinal and two babies amazing so it's just been fun i still have lots of pictures I, almost every time i go out i take a picture of bitsy enjoying the air and her coolaroo and just enjoying and these are just printed on copy paper no great shakes and i put them on canva so that i could get as many if i print just from my phone i get one picture per page that's a lot of wasted paper or if you go up to canva you can lay a whole bunch of pictures out and depending on their size get lots on one page i'm part of the hp ink program and i get charged by the page that I print not how much ink I use so if I have a full page filled with colored photographs I'm getting my money's worth from that versus printing one picture for a whole eight and a half by eleven piece of paper that counts as one if I printed 20 of these on one piece of paper that counts as one too so 
you know, you, you be frugal where you can so that you can splurge a little bit sometime other place. There's my bird feeder. You can't really see what, the, or the bird bath. Can't really see what it looks like, but little starlings all just bathing and bathing, throwing each other out, fighting over the, the bath. Um, again, not great pictures, but it reminds me of what I saw. It reminds me of things that I'm doing. And when I, when I can't sit here and do this, I have a post-it note that sits on the cover, and I just jot on the cover talk about the mama bird or talk about the hummingbird encounter or whatever so that the next time I do go to write down I can remember that and fill those things in too. Number so, one for the 12 days of composition book is a nature journal in honor of in the style of Edith Holden. Write down what you see, make observations, spend time in nature, and all you need is a pencil and a notebook. You don't need anything more than that. Later when you get back to the studio, you can color it in with your coloring pencils or your watercolor. You can take your watercolor out, whatever. You don't want to get it too complicated. Composition books don't necessarily take watercolor very well, so it's not really something you'd want to do. But later on, you can go from here and, and do a watercolor of your flowers or the hummingbird that visited or whatever. So that is the first you first of the 12 days is a nature journal. If you're not into birds and flowers, maybe it's trees, maybe it's just a walk. Go outside and take a walk and mentally note the things you see, the things that make you go wow. Things for example, today I walked outside and there was a one of my flocks flowers was completely upside down, just one blossom completely upside down, suspended so seemingly invisibly it, it just was hanging there in the middle of in midair <laughs> of course it was a spider web but I couldn't see it till I really really looked but it was one of the flowers got caught in a spider web couldn't see the spider web just the flower hanging that's something that made me stop and go wow that's pretty cool the millions of those kind of things and that would go in my Wagmore journal that's a whole nother thing but things that make you wonder things that make you go wow things that make you in awe or things that make you giggle one of the first days we were out bitsy she she walks along in outside of my flower beds and once in a while she she like traipses through the jungle and she goes behind all the flowers always mixes it up well one day she stuck her head out of one of the daylilies and they were in full full bloom and the way it happened and i didn't have my phone on with me on me in my camera ready when she stuck her head out that big thing she looked like a lion that little black face coming out of this great big mane of green I laughed so hard I wish I had a picture of it I don't I wrote it in here made me giggle I wrote it in my Wagmar book pay attention to things so nature birds trees walk do some urban sketching something that helps you decompress something that shifts your focus from the day-to-day -day grind to nature that's important could be sky watching i watch i found a new channel new to me and she's only been around maybe a year and a half or so and she already has well over twenty thousand subscribers which is saying a lot for a new channel she's wonderful it's called marion's world and she did this great big circle she had a name for it and i don't remember what it was but she drew a great big circle on a piece of watercolor paper and she drew lines through the circle and made a pie chart with 30 pie pieces or 31 whatever it was for that month and every day she colored in one of those pie pieces whatever was happening in the sky gray cloudy bright sunny overcast drizzly foggy whatever and so at the end of a month she has this beautiful picture of what the sky did every day during that month. Something like that. Sky watch. You could just, you know, every day write down what the sky is doing. Write down what the sunset looks like. Whatever it is, get it back to nature and enjoy it. Do the five balloon breaths. Do it every day if you can. And make note of it because it's, it's super fun to go back and to look at these things and remember. Here's my post-it. How did I get back there? It's getting filled so i'm gonna have to put another one on here but i have two two stories here that i want to remember to put in here i know why i put it in there so next time i write it'll be there because i need a new post-it that's why i did that there's usually a 
method to her madness. We just, you know, aren't sure what it is all the time. There we go. Now I have a new post-it so I can remember to add more stories. All right, you go out and you be in nature. Make yourself a nature journal and enjoy time outside, whatever the season, whatever the season. Don't let a little weather keep you inside. Take some deep breaths of fresh air, get full spectrum light. There are so many benefits to being outside. That's what we're doing here. And so many benefits to creativity and crafting. Keeps your brain healthy. Here's that information about that bird app. It's called Merlin ID and it's from Cornell University. And they have recorded sounds of all the birds that date back to the early 2000s, I think I've seen. Maybe even earlier than that. 1996, I think I might have seen. Anyway, it's fascinating to me because it uses your phone's microphone and it listens for birds. And when it hears a bird, it pulls what it thinks it is up. And it's it's been spot on every time. It shows you a picture of what bird's singing. And then you can then go to a different part of the app and learn all about that bird. What their mating habits are, where they're usually found, are they common, not common, what do they eat, what are their personalities like, etc. There's so much to be learned from it. You can also record the critters that visit your yard, the birds. I shouldn't say critters because it's just birds, which helps me. Uh, I thought I was listening to a bird and I want to know what it was and it didn't come up and it didn't come up. It was pine squirrel. So it knows, you know, the difference between a bird and a pine squirrel. I do not. Well, I do now, but I didn't. So much fun. It's a free app and it's, it, it, like I said, you can record things. And one day in my yard, sitting in my yard list recording, I had 12 different kinds of birds talking to me it was wonderful so it's it's an awesome app absolutely free no in-app purchases no bump ups i don't i don't know how they do it but it's really really cool so if you're going to do a, a birding thing a bird watching bird feeding even just a nature thing and you want to know what birds are around you get the app not an affiliate just a fan until we meet again keep your beastlies healthy go love them up Give them healthy treats. Keep them safe. Job. That's a lot of work. Montek at the lake. Out for now.